Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 25th of June. One terrorist neutralized infiltration bid foiled in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Sri Lanka pardons suspected Tamil Tigers convicted under terrorism law. And elephant beats the heat with splash at India Temple Pool. And now for all the details. Security forces on Friday neutralized one terrorist in an encounter in Shopian district of India's Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Meanwhile, security forces also foiled an infiltration bid and recovered arms and ammunition along the border with Pakistan in Jammu and Kashmir's Kupwara district on Friday. One terrorist was neutralized by security forces in an encounter in Shopian district of India's Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir on Friday. The encounter broke out during cordon and search operations in Hajipura area of Shopian based on specific inputs. The slain terrorists belong to Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba, according to local media reports. Search operations were still underway in the area till the last reports came in. This came after one other terrorist was gunned down in Shopian district in a similar encounter on Wednesday evening. Meanwhile, in an another incident on Friday, police foiled a major infiltration bid and recovered a huge cache of arms, ammunition and drugs along the de facto border with Pakistan in Dangdhar area of Kupwara district. A senior army official said all such bids have been foiled in last six months in Kashmir Valley and whatever will happen on line of control will be neutralized there itself. Our forces on the counter infiltration grid are totally uh, cautious. I can assure you that whatever will happen on the LC will be neutralized on the LC itself. India has long accused Pakistan of aiding and infiltrating terrorists from across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Pakistan, however, denies the charges. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday said that the delimitation exercise needs to be completed quickly so that Jammu and Kashmir can get an elected government. His remarks came after he held face-to-face -face talks with top Kashmiri leaders in New Delhi, the first meeting since the government scrapped the Himalayan region's special status in 2019. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday said that the delimitation exercise needs to be completed quickly so that Jammu and Kashmir can get an elected government. In a tweet after meeting top political leaders from the region, PM Modi said that the government's priority is to strengthen grassroots democracy in Jammu and Kashmir. During the talks on Thursday that were the first since the government scrapped the Himalayan region's special status in 2019, PM Modi told Kashmiri leaders that elections would be held after the region's constituencies were reconfigured. Regional leaders said they pressed their demand for restoration of statehood and limited autonomy during the talks. <laughs> पॉलिटिकल प्रोसेस शुरू होने वाला है डिलिमिटेशन समाप्ति के बाद जल्दी इलेक्शन भी करवाएंगे और वहां पर फिर से विधानसभा असेंबली बनेगी और लोगों की जो उम्मीद है कि उनको अपना नुमाइंदा मिले उस तरह का वहां पर किया जाएगा प्रक्रिया किया है हेलो सर जो तोड़ चुके हैं वो वापस आएगी ऐसा सोचना भी नहीं चाहिए Jammu and Kashmir is claimed in full by both India and its neighbor Pakistan, although each control only parts of it. As well as revoking Jammu and Kashmir's statehood and semi-autonomy in August 2019, India split it into two federally administered territories. It said the changes were needed to spur development in the region. 
India on Thursday reiterated that it desires normal relations with Pakistan. However, Islamabad must work towards creating a conducive atmosphere to not allow any territory under its control to be used for cross-border terrorism. Emphasizing New Delhi's commitment to peace in neighboring Afghanistan, India swiped at Pakistan's own influence in Kabul amid the ongoing withdrawal of U.S. troops from the country. India's Foreign Ministry on Thursday reiterated that it desires normal relations with Pakistan. However, Islamabad must work towards creating a conducive atmosphere to not allow any territory under its control to be used for cross-border terrorism. On Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi's comments about India's role in Afghanistan, India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakhchi during a weekly briefing on Thursday said, it is for the Afghan people to decide their partners and the size of the partnership, adding that the world knows what Pakistan has brought to Afghanistan, in contrast to New Delhi. Qureshi, in a recent interview to Afghan media, said, Islamabad feels that New Delhi's presence in the war-torn country is perhaps larger than it ought to be. We desire normal relations with all our neighbors, including Pakistan. Pakistan must work towards creating a conducive atmosphere including by taking credible, verifiable and irreversible actions to not allow any territory under its control to be used for cross-border terrorism. Tensions between India and Pakistan have spiked since New Delhi abrogated Article 370 of the Constitution to revoke the special status of Jammu and Kashmir on August 5, 2019. In recent months, Pakistani political and army leadership seems to have toned down rhetoric against India. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan recently said that India would have to take the first step for improving bilateral relations by addressing the Kashmir issue. India and Pakistan in February this year had announced that they had agreed to a ceasefire along the line of control, which was followed by Indus water talks, sporting visas and other measures. U.S. President Joe Biden meets Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and his former political foe Abdullah Abdullah on Friday to discuss Washington's support for Afghanistan as the last U.S. troops pack up after 20 years of war and government forces struggle to repel Taliban advances. Biden has said Afghan interpreters who risk their lives for American troops won't be left behind. U.S. President Joe Biden on Thursday said that Afghan interpreters who aided American troops during the 20-year-long war in Afghanistan will not be abandoned to their fate when all U.S. and coalition troops leave the country. This comes as Biden meets Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and his former political foe Abdullah Abdullah on Friday to discuss Washington's support for Afghanistan as the last U.S. troops pack up after 20 years of war and government forces struggle to repel Taliban advances. Already begun the process. Those who helped us are not going to be left behind. Ghani and Abdullah spent Thursday discussing the situation in Afghanistan with lawmakers on Capitol Hill. Afghan leaders also met with former Secretary of State, former security officials and influential U.S. political and diplomatic figures at a banquet at the U.S. Embassy in Afghanistan. The visit comes as Taliban insurgents press for a major offensive in Afghanistan, triggering growing concern in Congress. Meanwhile, a total of 130 Taliban militants surrendered to the Afghan government in western Herat province on Thursday, a local government spokesperson confirmed. <laughs> The Taliban militant group hasn't commented on the report yet and talks between the Afghan government and the Taliban in Doha have largely stopped. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's President Gotabaya Rajapaksa pardoned 16 men linked to Tamil Tiger rebels on Thursday, some of whom were detained for over two decades under an anti-terrorism law. The move came as the country faced renewed pressure from the United Nations over the detentions without charge. 
Sri Lanka's President Gotabaya Rajapaksa pardoned 16 men linked to the militant separatist group Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam on Thursday as the country faced renewed pressure from the UN over detentions without charge under an anti-terrorism law. The pardon is a first for people linked to the Tigers since Gotabaya Rajapaksa came to power in 2019 on a nationalist agenda, which included a promise that troops who crushed the rebels would not be prosecuted. The 16 Tamil detainees are among 94 prisoners who received a presidential pardon that came on the Buddhist festival of Poson. The men were convicted under PTA, the Prevention of Terrorism Act, that gives security forces sweeping powers to arrest and detain suspects. The UN Human Rights Council had last week urged the Sri Lankan government to either charge or release those detained under the PTA, including human rights activists who were recently arrested. However, the positive gesture has been marred by the president's pardon to former MP Duminda Silva, convicted for 2011 murder of a political rival during elections. US Ambassador Elena Teplitz said, pardoning Silva undermines the rule of law. Release of Duminda Silva, who is a political ally of Rajapaksa, had been long speculated. Moving on to news from Nepal. The existing cabinet members in Nepal were assigned additional portfolios two days after the nation's Supreme Court dismissed 20 ministers. Caretaker Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli's cabinet has now shrunk to only five members, including the PM. The caretaker Prime Minister of Nepal, K.P. Sharma Oli, has shuffled portfolios of ministers in five-member cabinet two days after Supreme Court interim order annulled cabinet expansion. Meanwhile, President Bidya Devi Bhandari also on Thursday appointed 20 chairs and members in 11 different constitutional commissions without the parliamentary hearing mandated by the constitution. PM Oli has kept the Ministry of Defence and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs with him, while Finance Minister Bishnoi Powdell has been assigned to shoulder the responsibility of Interior Ministry, Commerce Ministry and Ministry of Energy, Water Resources and Irrigation. Similarly, Ministers Krishna Gopal Shresht, Basant Kumar Nembang and Leela Nath Shresht were assigned different portfolios in the Cabinet. The Supreme Court on Tuesday had annulled the Cabinet reshuffle of June 4 and 10 by caretaker Prime Minister Oli, which has shrunk to five members, including the PM. The court stated that while parliament is dissolved, only existing cabinet members would be continuing over their posts. A 19-year-old young temple elephant named Akila in India's southern Tamil Nadu state enjoyed a bath in a newly constructed water tank made especially for her to beat the heat. Elephants are considered sacred animals in the Hindu religion and are deeply revered in India. A 19-year-old elephant enjoyed a bath in a newly constructed water pool at a temple in Tiruchirappalli city in India's southern Tamil Nadu state on Thursday. Authorities of Chambukeswara Akhilindeswari Temple built the 400-square-foot pool for Akila in the garden of the temple that will get water supply from the existing bore well. Granite stones have also been used to build a ramp to help the Jumbo enter the pool. Two motors will be used to fill and drain water. The used water will be drained to the temple garden. Akila, the elephant, splashed water on her and lay in the tank as she played with the water to beat the summer heat. Elephants are deeply revered in India where the elephant-headed god Ganesha is one of the most popular in the Hindu pantheon and is also considered lucky. Temple elephants are also fed herbs along with fruits and health checkups are regularly conducted to reduce their stress levels. India has more than 50% of Asiatic elephants, however, its population has been dwindling due to frequent poaching for its ivory. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.